Hello, I'm Professor Lucy Rogers, and I've been working with Design Spark because they're so interested in innovation. So I've been really fortunate to, to contact Wit Energy and get Will Bolt from there to come and talk to me today. Can you explain what Wit Energy is and who you are, please? Sure. Nice to see you, Lucy. Um, nice to nice to have you on board. Um, right. So Wit Energy is um, it's based around a, a pattern that Martin Wicket um, made about ten years ago. Um, and it's about collecting uh, motion, using motion to generate electricity, uh, using effectively a, a gearbox, and um, and that's used with a with a pendulum system. And uh, I've just realised I'm not on radio, so I can actually show you one. So, um, so um, if you have a look at this, you'll see two pendulums hanging from this unit here, which is a gearbox. Yeah. And what that does, every time you move it, any way you move it at all. You can see, hopefully, at the end. Hold it up see... slightly. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sorry. Um, <laughs> so anything I do to this, whether it's backwards and forwards, oh, yeah. up and down, whatever, um, I'm going to be generating rotary motion at the end of that flywheel. So whatever got, those pendulums do. Got one big flywheel at this end. Yeah, and then sorry, yeah. The the pendulums coming underneath. Right, that's probably better, isn't it? Yeah. I feel like I'm in an identity parade now, but holding up something yeah. quite different to my name tag. So whatever I do to that, whatever that motion is, you can see that I'm moving those pendulums, mm -hmm. and at the end of that, the uh, the flywheel is moving. Now that that flywheel, the idea of that is that we would connect that to a generator, which we've done in generated power, um, and. Um, what so, we so you're taking movement from every direction, all the all the different axes, and and turning it into one constant spinning in one direction. Exactly right. Yeah. So um, a simpler thing was done a few years ago, um, many years ago, with the automatic watch, like mm -hmm. that. Um, but that's just a, a swinging pendulum going back and forth, uh, and it uses a couple of clutches to make sure that the end motion is always in one direction. Um, what Martin did was do something very clever, and he put another, um, effectively you've got two axes there. So mm -hmm. instead of it just creating motion from that, it's also with that as well. And that means it adds a huge amount of potential in terms of how it generates uh, that end motion on the end of the flywheel. Um, but it, and it's it's a bit bigger than a watch, so what are you going to use it for? <laughs> um, well, it's actually very scalable. So um, we did think about making one as small as a, a watch, but um, the amount of power you can get from it isn't actually that useful. Um, when you go up in size, uh, you find that you can generate enough power to do some quite useful stuff. Um, so the thing which we're working on at the moment, which is particularly interesting, is uh, generating power from subsea uh, currents, so sea currents. Um, they generate a, a movement, and then we use a phenomenon called uh, vortex-induced vibration. So effectively, you put something in a moving current, and you get you get movement like this. It's actually something that people don't really want. Uh, generally, you know, people in a marine world want to avoid that sort of movement. So the little um, the little whirlpools that you see maybe um, on, on a river on the on the from a bridge on the river, and you can see the whirlpools where the struts come down. And it's those that happen underneath the water that you're going to harness. Exactly right. Yeah. So that creates an unstable motion. So that, that movement you've described is exactly what happens. So there's um, vortex shredding, which means that um, this tube that we're using actually moves you know, quite a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and what we do is uh, we take our WIT device in. Sorry, it's another prop. Um, something a bit like that. Oh, uh, yeah. Can you see that? So you've put it in a in a big glass bubble, plastic bubble. A big bubble. glass bubble, uh, which is sealed against the water, and um, and effectively that moves around. You get the motion that you just saw when I picked up the unit and, and saw it wobbling around. Um, why can't you just use a turbine for that though? Well, you, you can, and um, you know turbines are great and they've got their place. Um, the the nice thing about what you've got is that because it's in a completely sealed unit, um, first of all it's you know, it, it doesn't get affected by things like marine sea life and seaweed, and uh, and build up of you know, seaweed. Uh, sea life grows on things, and it tends to sort of stop them from working. Um, whereas with our unit, you can you can put it anywhere, and actually, seaweed, sea life doesn't really affect it. That's one thing. And secondly, um, because there's actually no moving parts apart from the little wobble, which we can we can cope with that. 
um, uh, there's actually no moving parts in contact with the sea. Um, and it's actually quite hard getting a dynamic seal to work consistently at very deep you know, ocean depths. Um, so this thing, you know, it's actually the limits are really the limits of the enclosure. So actually you can great. I, I spoke to the enclosure guys the other day and I said, we're, we're putting this 100 metres below sea. And he went, oh, yeah. And I said, not a problem. He said, well, uh, we test them to 10,000 metres. So, you know, <laughs> you I can go deeper. Got a problem. Uh, <laughs> it can't get much deeper in the world, can it really? 10,000 metres is about the limit. Um, I, I do like the idea, though, that because it's a sealed unit, there's there's no sharp bits to to turn around, so fish aren't going to get cut up by it, and it's oh, yeah. yeah yeah absolutely yeah, no, I like that um, um, yeah so it's it's a very self enclosed unit and and because we've got you know very standard components although it's a very novel thing that Martin came up with um, we're actually using really standard you know technology within it just used in a clever way so it's gears clutches um, shafts bearings some seals and the enclosure which is pretty well known. And then a generator and some electronics. So all these are pretty well known. Yeah, things that have been around for, for decades, if not longer. Yeah, hundreds of years even. Yeah, you know, I was so thinking it's... electronics, maybe not of. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, but yes, yeah, yeah, gears and clutches and and stuff. Yeah, hundreds of years. Wow. So it's it's modern tech, but it's not. It, it's it's old tech reinvented. Yeah, it's using things that that are already known in a novel way, which I suppose is almost an exact definition of, you know, IP and patenting, isn't it? It's, uh, you know, doing something in a novel way, which is exactly what this is about. So um, talking about patenting there, I mean, I played with this thing six years ago when it was a big, big prototype and, and, and I had to go with it. And it felt, I mean, I understood the maths behind it, but it felt like it was a perpetual motion machine <laughs> and, it, and it was just magic. But, yeah. you know, it, it, once you've gone through the maths, it, it obviously does work. And you've got many awards to, to you know, back you up on this. We, we do, yeah. So fortunately, it's not just us saying it. We are saying it quite loudly that we think it's got a lot of potential. But um, I mean, just recently, in the last few days, in fact, we've just been really pleased to be awarded um, uh, it's something called the Solar Impulse Foundation. So this was started by the guy that flew around the world in a solar plane. Oh, yeah, the, the one with the really long, yeah. Yeah, that's right, <laughs> rings. Exactly. Um, So they're really keen on, the, the whole idea of that, I think, was for him to, you know, to try and promote and demonstrate, you know, sustainability and how you can do things differently. So they've got a foundation which um, they've created a, a list of the thousand best um, solutions to pr protect the environment. And WIT has just been awarded one of those thousand best solutions, which oh, we're wow. really proud about. Um, and that's on the website. You can check that out and see, you know, all about how they're going about their business. And it's, it's a really interesting thing they're doing. Um, we're very, very pleased that we're now listed as being one of those solutions. So how um, is it competing against solar panels and, and, and turbines? I mean, I can understand it under the water, but on the on the ground level, is it is it comparable? Comparable? Um, it's, it's different. I say it was complementary. So a, a solar panel, I mean, this is a simplistic way of looking at it, but um, the solar panels are really good when it's sunny and light um, and out in the ocean when it's sunny and light then there's probably not too much sea movement um, or movement like that but when it's the winter um, or at night time obviously solar panels aren't much good um, and um, and they also do get covered in things as well which um, from birds I won't go into <laughs> um, so um, solar panels are, are great as far as they go and actually it's a very complementary technology so the combination of, of different things is, is often the case. You mix a different, you know, mix of sort of things like the solar panel, our piece as well, and, uh, and maybe some other things as well, and maybe some storage too. And then you've got a complete integrated solution. Um, but certainly a solar panel is great for a lot of things. Uh, it's one of the things we're looking at as a military application. Uh, and um, they would like to be able to monitor things without being seen. Uh, so having something that's beneath the ocean and is just generating its power nice and quietly and uh, consistently from the sea current, um, that's actually quite an advantage to them, as opposed to a solar panel, which is on the surface. And if you're trying to monitor something and not be seen, then that's not so good. Yeah, it's quite reflective, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, it's, it's a fairly big thing to be seen, exactly. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, you know, th there's a place for all of these technologies, I would say. And um, our niche is, is nice in that you can just, you know, deploy it 
and uh, because it is based around you know standard technology albeit we've got a, a lot of development that we're doing to make sure that it will survive you know for as long as we need to underneath the ocean um, we will be able to make it so that it's uh, it will be service free it will sit there wow. and generate its power nice and silently for as long as you like that's that's the intention and we see no reason why we can't do that um, and we've done a lot of analysis already to show for example on the gearbox we've um we've shown that you know we can uh, we can we can uh, keep those gears going for maybe 10,000 hours without needing a service which is um, which is great we're, we're doing I, I, a lot. I've just had this uh, mental image of a shark swimming along and finding it and plugging its mobile phone in so <laughs> at the bottom of the ocean <laughs> Um, sharks are pretty intelligent, or dolphins. Dolphins are yeah, dolphins very, very intelligent. Be if I believe the Hitchhiker's Guide, it's they're incredibly intelligent. So it's probably going to be them, I guess. But yes, it's an interesting tool. Uh, is it just in the oceans that you're using it? Because I, I seem to remember talking about backpacks at one stage. Uh, it's really where you can get any motion, um, and, and 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 yeah, backpacks is one particular idea that we worked on a few years ago, and is definitely coming back to the fore. So. Um, on our website, there's a great video of me walking up and down my street, um, causing quite a lot of, it did cause quite a lot of interest. What uh -huh. on earth are you doing? Um, if you tune your uh, your pendulum length um, to be in line with the frequency which is driving it, um, then you can create a lot of motion. And um, if you create um, uh, motion from walking, uh, it's actually quite a nice, it, it feels really good. I had the thing mounted on my back and um, it actually, you, you kind of, you can feel it moving around a bit and like the wobbly bridge on the you know the millennium bridge in london you sort of get into a bit of a rhythm and it's actually quite hard not to try and generate more power which i suppose <laughs> is quite a good thing end um, up running <laughs> yeah so we, we did a lot of work a few years ago and we, we we didn't quite have um a strong enough uh set of hardware to develop enough power to make it really useful um so back to a few years ago a couple of three years ago uh, we generated about two or three watts from constant walking around. Um, right. Two or three watts isn't quite enough to be interesting for something like charging a mobile phone. You really need about five watts. Um, right. with, the, with the hardware we got now, we're just developing, um, that should be quite achievable. Um, okay. It's definitely going to be on tension. The, the first thing is to get the ocean stuff running because those are the people that they're saying, well, look, I'd really like to have some power out in the ocean to monitor things, environmental monitoring, wildlife monitoring, um, the covert monitoring that I mentioned. These your people anchor really... clients. Sorry? <laughs> Sorry? Your anchor clients. Sorry, well, I yeah, had to throw a the, pun in. They're the people that really need power and haven't got it. So, yeah. you know, we're in a very strong position and we, we, we want to be able to supply that. And, you know, we do have um, some fairly strong views on, you know, sustainability and environment. So that first application of monitoring the environment and seeing what's happening with the climate and being able to supply that information, you know, in an easy way, that's quite important to us. Um, so I, I can't actually get my hands on one for my for when I go hiking just yet. Not yet, Lucy, but you're <laughs> first on the list, I'm sure, for us <laughs> to be able to supply that to you. But uh, how can anyone who's watching this who actually has a, a requirement for this, how can they get involved? Um, well, the first thing is just to see uh, what we tend to find is when you show someone uh, the unit and you say, well, this is what it does. And, you know, you move it around and any motion at all will generate, you know, this movement and they go, Oh, have you thought about uh, extreme kayaking? Someone told me about that. I was like, no. <laughs> he said, well, I do, I do sort of hardcore night kayaking. And he said, I can't use this. I need a battery. And he said, it quite often runs out because we have lights that are quite powerful. He said, I just want something to be able to power my, you know, to power my light and just keep it topped up. Could you do that? So what, what I was going to say was that people see it and they go, ah, oh, you could use it for this. So the first thing is, you know, people watching this, you think, what could I use it for? We'd love to fight. You'd love to get your ideas. Right. Um, you know, and they, they, they come from left field. I was talking to someone at a, uh, like a marine exhibition and he said, have you thought about um, degaussing ships, monitoring that? I said, I haven't often thought about degaussing ships, <laughs> actually. But, you know, if we had um, a unit that was based around, you know, the uh, vortex induced and the wobbling thing, um, I said, yeah, we could certainly do that. And, and a lot of the applications are relatively low power for things like monitoring and stuff like that. So we don't need a great big unit to be able to do that. Um, but then if we were to say you have to monitor using batteries, then you'd have to have an enormous battery to do any length of time to monitor things. So that's number one is like 
any ideas you know we'd love to hear them um, and it's trickle charging it isn't it it's trickle charging the battery it's not going to power something itself it's um it's better to have it trickle charging so that um for example with um a lot of monitoring uh you have bursts of power so you you collect a lot of data and you have to push a load of data out so when you're just collecting data there's a small amount of power you're you're using to do that but when you're pushing the data out you know via gps or 5g or something like that then there's a burst of power so you need to have you know a battery to be able to supply that level of power just for that short time you know it's a few seconds mm -hmm. in the course of a week or something like that um so yes it's it's in conjunction with the battery system um so yes it's it's, it's effectively I'd, I'd go further than trickle charging because it's <laughs> we're hoping to sort of match the amount of power that we're we're um we're, we're actually needing to deliver to certain things so right. um so it's, it's making sure there's enough like the backpack for example um you know we know that you know, it needs to be enough to charge your phone and keep it charged. And and particularly you know, things like um, it really annoys me when I'm out walking uh, that I'm trying to follow a trail on my OS maps and uh, the battery is just draining like mad. And uh, I know I could take a battery with me, but actually if I had something in my backpack and it was just always generating that power to um, to be able to keep the thing topped up, I'd be I'd be a lot happier. I'd feel a lot more comfortable going out. You know, the amount of times I've had to turn back on a walk so I think actually I have no idea where I need to just go back to where I came because I've run out of oh, battery no. um, which is silly and so I, 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 I'm, I'm going to have one you know that's for sure. Um, for when I so go you, you said how individuals can get involved are you yeah. interested in in hearing from commercial companies? Yeah absolutely um, and again it's thinking about um, things like commercializing something like the backpack unit for example. Um, we're, we're a very small company and um, you know we're pursuing things in, in the short term that you know we know has got a you know initial aim and people want it and we can supply that relatively easily but when we're looking at the very big volumes in the backpack you know market if you imagine all the people go hiking and all the people that you know are out maybe not doing extreme kayaking but that sort of thing um uh, that's quite a big market and um and we haven't got you know we haven't got the resources um or, or the finance uh, to be able to develop those sort of things so those sort of commercial people seeing the opportunity um and it could be something like that for the backpack and just quickly on that we've got a, a, a lot of interest in developing countries where you know children walk you know very long distances to school and they don't really have access to power generally so having something that you just used in your backpack to charge your phone you know would be a very beneficial application and one that would be you know incredibly you know big as well so we need that sort of that clout for one of better mm -hmm. world, um to be able to develop that and you know someone like um uh in in the marine market so things like um you know a lot of people have approached us uh, on things like large volumes for lighting green lighting you know coming into um uh, a shore something like that so mm -hmm. you know again these would be big volumes and you need to be able to you know tool these things up we need to be able to test them you know the important thing for us is that you know we manufacture something which is going to be reliable it's one of the key things about this uh, technology um and in order to make something reliable you need to make sure you break it before somebody else does you know so you've you got the, you've got the prototypes you've got them all working you just now need to scale it and and looking for maybe for partners to do that with yeah exactly yeah and we're in a very exciting time and that we're <laughs> just getting things we've, we've done lots of separate testing for we've modeled you know the device to make sure that it moves in the right way we've tested out a wave tank to prove that it does that um we've got a lovely robot arm um up at gloucester um and we're able to reproduce the movement from the sea on our robot arm um i was going to do that but it, we'll show you a video i think that's probably uh -huh. better. um and um that robot arm reproduces what we've seen out at sea and then we've got our unit on there with a generator and we're collecting the power from that and we're logging the power um, and then we produced, uh, you know, a unit similar to this, um, which we are doing tests down in Plymouth at the moment. So we're putting that in a sea current in Plymouth, and we're just at the point of actually getting some some data back from that. So it's you know a real device in a real place, you know, generating real power. So um, absolutely excellent news and really exciting. Will Bolt with Energy. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lucy. Thanks very much for your time.